Hi, my name is Hans Lee. I'm an associate professor and director of multiple myeloma clinical research at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And today it's my pleasure on behalf of my co-authors to present an update on the efficacy and safety of the phase two parts of the linker MN1 study with lymphoceltimab in patients in, with relapse refractory multiple myeloma. Lymphoceltimab is a bispecific antibody that targets BCMA on the plasma cell and CD3 on the T cell receptor. In the phase two part of the linker MN1 study, two dose cohorts of lymphoceltimab at 50 milligrams and 200 milligrams were evaluated to optimize dose selection. At this year's ASCO and EHA meetings, we presented for the very first time the initial results of the fully enrolled phase two parts of the linker MN1 study at both the 50 milligram and 200 milligram cohorts. This is the phase two study design. Key eligibility criteria included patients with relapse refractory multiple myeloma with at least three prior lines of therapy, including a proteasome inhibitor, immunomodulatory drug, and anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody, or who were triple class refractory regardless of lines of prior therapy. The primary objective was to assess over response rate and key secondary objectives were to evaluate duration of response, progression free survival, MRD status, and overall survival. Patients who enrolled on the study received lymphoceltimab intravenously, initially with two step up doses of five milligrams and 25 milligrams one week apart on week one, day one, and on week two, day one, with a 24 hour hospitalization after each of the two step up doses for CRS monitoring. Subsequently, patients then received either 50 milligrams or 200 milligrams of lymphoceltimab weekly for cycles one through three on a 28 day cycle, followed by de escalation of the frequency of dosing to every other week for cycles four through five. And for patients who enrolled on the 200 milligram cohort, they could undergo further de escalation of their frequency of dosing in a response adapted approach to every four weeks of attaining a very good partial response or better. These are the baseline patient characteristics of patients enrolled in the phase two part of the study. 104 patients received 50 milligrams of lymphoceltimab, and 117 patients received 200 milligrams of lymphoceltimab, inclusive of 12 patients enrolled in the phase one dose escalation. The baseline patient characters were generally similar between the 50 milligram and 200 milligram cohorts. Patients were heavily pretreated, and as noted in the 200 milligram cohort with a median of five prior lines of therapy, approximately three fourths of patients were triple class refractory, and 27% of patients were age 75 years or older. High risk subsets of patients were highly represented across the study, including 36% of patients with high risk cytogenetics in the 200 milligram cohort defined as deletion 17P translocation 414 and translocation 1416. Across the study, approximately 25% of patients had bone marrow positivity greater than 50%, and median baseline soil BCMA levels were 377 nanograms per milliliter for both the 50 milligram and 200 milligram cohorts. Lymphoceltimab concentrations were generally dose proportional with approximately three to four fold higher mean pre-dose trough concentrations upon introduction of the 200 milligram dose versus the 50 milligram dose. At the 50 milligram dose, the overall response rate was 50%. At the recommended dose of 200 milligrams, the overall response rate was 71%, including a very good partial response rate or better of 59%, and a complete response rate or better of 30%. Among patients who attained a complete response or stringent complete response in the 50 milligram and 200 milligram cohorts with available MRD data, 54% of patients were MRD negative at a sensitivity of 10 to the minus five. We looked, we looked at subgrid analyses in the 200 milligram cohorts and an over response rate of at least 50% was observed across all key high risk subgroups analyzed, including patients over the age of 75, ISS33 disease, extramedular disease, 
high risk cytogenetics and high baseline disease burden manifested by high bone marrow apoptosis greater than 50 percent and high baseline soy will be semi levels greater than 400 nanograms per milliliter we also looked at and compared subgroup analyses between the 50 milligram and 200 milligram cohorts. And a 200 milligram dose was associated with a higher over response rate across key subgroups, including patients with extramedullary disease, high risk cytogenetics, and high baseline so will be CMA levels. This is a swimmer's plot of responding patients in the 200 milligram cohort. Responses were durable and deepened with time the median time to response was 0.95 months. The probability of maintaining response at six months was 84%. Per protocol, patients who are treated in the 50 milligram cohort who then progress between weeks four and 12 of treatment could undergo intrapatient dose escalation to the 200 milligram dose. Eight such patients underwent intrapatient dose escalation from 50 milligrams to 200 milligrams and six of these patients, six of these eight patients attained a very good partial response after dose escalation, and responses appear to be durable in four of these eight patients. At a median follow-up of 7.7 months, the median progression of free survival in the 50 milligram cohort was 7.9 months. At a median follow-up of 5.6 months, the median progression of free survival in the 200 milligram cohort had not been reached. The six-month probability of progression-free survival in the 200 milligram cohort was 73%. The most common grade three and grade four treatment emergent adverse events were hematologic in nature, including neutropenia, anemia, and thrombocytopenia. Non-hematologic adverse events were generally grade one and grade two in severity. The most common adverse event across the study was cytokine release syndrome, which occurred in 55% of patients in the 50 milligram cohort and 45% of patients in the 200 milligram cohort. Additional details regarding CRS will be displayed on the next slide. ICANS of any grade occurred in 6% of patients across the study. Grade three and grade four ICANS events occurred in 2% of patients and there were no grade five ICANS cases throughout the study. Treatment immersion adverse events leading to treatment discontinuation occurred in 12% of patients in the 50 milligram cohort and 16% of patients in the 200 milligram cohort. Treatment emergent adverse events leading to death on treatment or within 30 days of the last treatment dose occurred in seven patients in the 50 milligram cohort and in six patients in the 200 milligram cohort. None were considered treatment related as per the attribution of the treating physician. Most CRS events occurred during the step-up dosing period after the first two step-up doses there were no grade three or higher CRS events that occurred after the step-up dosing period. As mentioned previously, the incidence of CRS was 45% in the 200 milligram cohort, including 35% grade one in severity, 9% that were grade two in severity and a single grade three CRS event. When CRS did occur, it generally occurred on the day of dosing and resolved within 24 hours. The rates of infections were similar between the 50 milligram and 200 milligram cohorts. In the 50 milligram cohort, infections occurred in 62% of patients, among which 35% were grade three or higher. In the 200 milligram cohort, infections occurred in 60% of patients, among which 37% were grade three or higher. Opportunity infections occurred in 2% of patients in the 50 milligram cohort, and in 8% of patients in the 200 milligram cohort, Notably, there are four cases of PJP pneumonia in the 200 milligram cohort, all which occurred in the absence of PJP prophylaxis. In summary, early, deep, and durable responses were observed with lemaceltamab therapy in patients who are mostly triple class refractory. At the recommended dose of 200 milligrams, the over response rate was 71%, with a 59% very good partial response rate or better and 84% probability of responding, maintaining a response at six months. Across the 50 milligram, 200 milligram cohorts, 54% of patients who attained a complete response or should complete response with a viable MRD samples or MRD negative at a sensitivity of 10 to the minus five. Limbiceltum also showed a generally, generally manageable safety and tolerability profile. Because of the rapid onset and rapid resolution of CRS, 
hospitalization is only required for 24 hours after the initial two step up doses on week one, day one, and on week two, day one. And CRS was reported in 45% of patients in the 200 milligram cohort, majority being grade one in severity. Taken together, these results support the continued development of lymphosiltimab in multiple myeloma. And a phase three trial, the Linker MM3 study, will be initiated in patients with early relapse refractory multiple myeloma that will compare lymphosiltimab with a pomalidomide based standard of care triplet. We like to thank the patients, their families, all the other investigators, and all the investor site members involved in the study, especially during the challenging times of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Thanks for your attention.